Chukchi Sea Orientation and Cultural Awareness Program, a required course for lessee executives, agents, contractors, and subcontractors. Presented by Amawak and Associates and Arctic Impact Management and Fairweather Inc., support services for natural resource industries. Moderators are George and Maggie Amawak, and I will introduce George and Amawak Sr. He's a lifelong North Slope resident and a whaling captain. Education, Sheldon Jackson College, University of Alaska Fairbanks, Northrop Institute of Technology. He's a five three-year terms as mayor of the North Slope Borough, which is the size of Minnesota. Assist, he has assisted in the establishment of the regional and village corporations after Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act and has been elected to their corporate offices. He's also been appointed to the OCS Policy Committee by the U.S. Department of the Interior. His lifelong mission is safeguarding the Inupiat subsistence and culture. Maggie Brower Amawak, daughter of Arnold Brower Sr., a long life barrel whaling captain and reindeer herder. Her education, she attended Sheldon Jackson Junior College, University of Alaska at Fairbanks, MTI Business College, Colorado Tech University. She's married to me, and we both raised a family in the Arctic. <clears throat> she was also the first employee of the North Slope Borough, and she secured funding and set up its offices in 1972. She is, was also the former Alaska Eskimo Whaling Commission Executive Director from 1989 to 2007. Life mission is safeguarding Inupiat subsistence and culture. This picture is the Amawak crew. George and Maggie Amawak has established their whaling crew since 1981. Safeguarding the Chukchi Sea environment, our people, the Inupid, have lived on the oil-rich North Slope and the shores of the Chukchi Sea for more than 10,000 years. Besides oil, there are other riches in our beautiful yet often harsh environment. Mammals, fish, birds, waterfowl, and vegetation. For centuries, these have sustained our people and shaped our culture, values, and traditions. This picture shows two bowhead whale jawbones standing upright, and in the back of them is the skull. Both sides, you see the skin boat frame. This is how it looks without its bearded seal skin cover. Program Overview, Session 1, Explanation and Requirement for Training, Session 2, Inupiat Culture, Session 3, Local Fauna and Species of Concern, Archaeological Sites, Guidance to Avoiding Disturbance, Session 4, Conflict Avoidance. These are the highlights of what you will learn about our ancient culture and the Inupiat way of life. Understanding, sensitivity, and respect is the key to being good neighbors in the Arctic. Session one, explanation of requirement for training. Chuck Chi C. Lee Sale 193 stipulation number two, orientation program. Lessee shall include in exploration plan a proposed orientation program. The program shall be designed in sufficient detail to inform individuals working on the project of specific types of environmental, social, and cultural concerns that relate to the sale and adjacent areas. The program shall address the importance of not disturbing archaeological and biological resources and habitats. This requirement is the reason why we are here and we are here to introduce you to our Inupiat culture and the lifestyles of the coastal communities of the North Slope, the Inupiat. The program will include the production and distribution of information cards on endangered and or threatened species in the sale area. 
The program has been designed to increase the sensitivity and understanding of personnel to community values, customs, and lifestyles in areas in which the personnel will be operating. The orientation includes information concerning avoidance of conflicts with subsistence activities and pertinent mitigation. The program shall be attended at least once a year by all personnel involved in on-site exploration or development and production activities. The lessees shall maintain a record of all personnel who attend the program. Marine Mammal Protection Act, MMPA, unmitigatable adverse impact, an impact from specific activity reducing availability of species to a level insufficient for harvest to meet subsistence needs by causing marine mammals to abandon traditional hunting areas, directly displacing subsistence users and or placing physical barriers between marine mammals and the subsistence users that cannot be sufficiently mitigated by other means or measures to increase availability of marine mammals to allow subsistence needs to be met. Executive Order 12898, Environmental Justice. Environmental justice is defined by the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, as the fair treatment and meaningful involvement of all people regardless of race, color, and enforcement of environmental laws, regulations, and policies. Fair treatment means that no group of people, including racial, ethnic, socioeconomic group should bear a disproportionate share of negative environmental consequences resulting from industrial, municipal, and commercial operations or the execution of federal, state, local, and tribal programs and policies. Mandatory Orientation and Cultural Awareness Program, why you are here. On the North Slope, you are legally required to protect biological resources, understand, respect, and be sensitive to Inupiat culture. Avoid disruption of subsistence activities. Attend orientation program at least once a year. It's a matter of law. MMPA is one of the federal statutory laws that all outer continental shelf operators must comply with. End of session one. The Inupiat culture. Our homeland, today our homeland is politically defined as the North Slope Borough. It is the largest county level political subdivision in the United States. It is also the third least densely populated with less than 8,000 people living in eight far-flung communities. It has large land area than Utah. Its eastern coastline is the Beaufort Sea its western coastline is along the Chukchi Sea, where you'll be working. The North Slope Borough. Our homeland is here in the far north of Alaska. We are the Inupiat. We are also known as the Eskimos. Evidence of our existence dates back 10,000 years. The Chukchi Sea region is part of our homeland. For the village of Barrow, the largest North Slope village, Utpiavik, the place where the snowy owls are hunted, home of more than half of the North Slope Inupiat, has archaeological sites with 60 mounds of prehistoric winter dwellings, Cape Smythe and Naval Arctic Research Center, economic, transportation, and administrative hub. Barrow is damp, Alcohol is permitted for personal consumptions only, and sale is prohibited. 
Whaling and other subsistence practices, culturally important. Bowhead, gray, killer, beluga whales migrate near Barrow. Most important, bowhead hunted at the ice edge or open leads in the spring from open sea in the fall. Diets of some cultures depend on beef. The Inupiat depend on whale for its cultural and nutritional value. For the village of Wainwright, third largest North Slope village, located on Chuck G Coast, 72 miles southwest of Barrow. Named for Lieutenant John Wainwright. Inupiat name is Ulonet, meaning where the land slopes to the sea. Temperatures range from minus 56 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Population less than 600 people, 94% of them are Inupiat. Subsistence based on whales and caribou. Chuck G. C. near Wainwright is ice free from July through September. Bowheads hunted in the spring and open leads in the ice. Wainwright is dry and alcohol is prohibited. For the village of Point Lay, near the mouth of Kokoluk River, 300 miles southwest of Barrow, 30.5 square miles of land, temperatures range from minus 55 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit, historically occupied year-round by one or two families who were later joined by Point Hope, Barrow, and Wainwright families. Point Lay is also dry and alcohol is prohibited. In 1974, the village moved from the old site on the offshore gravel barrier island to the mainland. Old site, old site now used as summer hunting camp. Villagers hunt belugas from shoreline. Village recently admitted to the Alaska Eskimo Whaling Commission and received a quota of one bowhead whale strike. Chuck G. C. near Point Lay is ice free from late June until September. For the village of Point Hope, one of the oldest Inupiat areas that is continuously occupied. A large gravel spit at the tip Point Hope Peninsula, the Inupiat name, Tikia, means index finger. Settlements existed on the peninsula for 2,500 years. 335 miles southwest of Barrow, temperatures range from minus 49 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Point Hope is also dry and alcohol is prohibited. Point Hope Inupiat Eskimos depend on marine subsistence. The peninsula offers good access to marine mammals, easy boat launching and open leads in early spring. The Chukchi near Point Hope is ice free from late June till mid-September. Abundant resources help preserve culture after a century of outside influences. Open lead is defined as ever shifting frigid slice of open water that separates floating polar ice pack from the ice shelf that extends from the land. Our Inupiat values. Inupiat Pagirangich. Our values have deep roots. The Inupiat people of the North Slope place great importance in maintaining our culture and our lifestyle. Our culture has deep roots in the natural environment, the land, the water, and the animals. Love and respect for elders and one another. Our elders model our traditions and ways of being. They are a light of hope to younger generations. May we treat each other as our elders have taught us. Family and kinship. Knowledge of family tree. As Inupiat people, we believe in knowing who we are and how we relate to one another. Our family binds us together. In the North Slope villages, a lot of people are related to each other. It is important to know where you come from and who you are. Respect for others. We follow what our elders have taught us by respecting one another. 
If you respect others, they will respect you back. Respect for nature. Our Creator gave us a gift of our surroundings. Those before us place ultimate importance on respecting this magnificent gift for their future generations. Hunting skills. Reverence for the land, sea, and animals is the foundation of our hunting traditions. Domestic skills. Knowledge and practice of skills passed down from generation to generation is important to the survival of our culture. Humility. Our hearts command we act on goodness. Expect no reward in return. This is part of our cultural fiber. Compassion. Though the environment is harsh and cold, our ancestors learned to live with warmth and kindness, caring and compassion. Humor. Sense of humor and laughter is our social fabric. Sharing. It is amazing how sharing works. Your acts of giving always comes back. Cooperation. Together we have an awesome power to accomplish anything. It is through cooperation that we can pull a bowhead whale on top of the ice. Conflict avoidance. The Inupiat way is to live, act, think, and speak positively and to avoid conflict through cooperation. We must work together to avoid conflict. Respect for each other in the waters where you work and on the airplane or in a meeting. Spirituality. We know the power of prayer. We are spiritual people. We believe in God, our Creator, and we hold God Most High. Family roles. Understanding family roles is paramount to survival in our harsh environment. Knowledge of language. With our language, we have identity. It helps us to discover who we are in our mind and in our hearts. Responsibility to tribe. As members of the tribe, we are responsible for making traditional laws, and it is our duty to adhere to them. Understanding the subsistence lifestyle. Subsistence, the customary and traditional use of wild, renewable resource by a resident domiciled in rural areas of the state for direct personal or family consumption as food, shelter, fuel, clothing, tools, or transportation, and for the making and selling of native handicraft articles of inedible byproducts of fish and wildlife. Understanding the subsistence lifestyle, subsistence activities have provided the cohesive threads around which the Inupiat people of the North Slope have held their culture together during times of economic and social changes and concerns. It constitutes far more than food on the table. Subsistence uses and resources are extremely sensitive to the exploration and development activities. The bowhead whales, the bearded seals, ring seals, and spotted seals. The walrus, all species of fish, eider ducks. Because the ocean is our garden, Inupiat opposed outer continental shelf exploration and drilling. Industrial activities must not interfere with our subsistence lifestyle. Sometimes what is harm cannot be fixed and mitigation is required. 
We will learn about mitigation in another section of this program. With mutual understanding and respect for our garden, we can coexist. The do's and don't to avoid disturbing subsistence. Don't fly aircraft near subsistence areas. Don't restrict areas of subsistence hunting. Do prevent oil spills. Do coordinate with industry to reduce impacts. Do comply with regulatory restrictions on discharge. The ocean is our garden. The whaling is sacred to our way of life. Subsistence is the heart of our culture. Avoid unmitigatable adverse impact. Don't restrict access to subsistence resources. End of session two. Section 3, Local Fauna and Species of Concern. In this session, we will learn that the entire world has good reasons for protecting the Arctic, and it is the responsibility of all of us. Marine mammals. Marine mammals are air-breathing, warm-bodied mammals that live primarily in ocean water. Commonly recognized marine mammals are whales, seals, porpoises. Polar bears are considered marine mammals because they live on sea ice most of the year. Alaska's Arctic species, ring seal, bearded seal, and polar bear. Subarctic species, spotted seal, walrus, beluga, and bowhead whales. Polar bear, nanook, population concerns, cultural symbol of the Inupiat, Marine Mammal Protection Act protects bears from hunting. Climate change, contamination of Arctic environment, overhunting, and increasing development poses challenges, listed as threatened in 2008. How to recognize if you see one, you will know it. Polar bears are Earth's largest land carnivores. Males measure eight to nine feet, nose to tail, weigh up to 1,700 pounds. Females measure six to seven feet and half the weight of males. Gray whale, Arverilor, location and migration, once found in North Atlantic, now only in North Pacific. Summer feeding in North and West Bering and Chukchi Seas, in fall, migrate south to Baja, California, to Mexico. February through May, migrate back to Alaska. Cultural and nutritional importance, traditional food source for Alaska and Russian, Siberian, Yupik natives. Last reported subsistence takes in Alaska were in 1995. Minky whale, Unkvik, location and migration, Widely distributed and commonly found from poles to tropics. Common in Bering and Chukchi Seas and inshore waters of Gulf of Alaska. Known to penetrate loose sea ice during summer. Some individuals venture north of Bering Straits. Minky whale unkvik, cultural nutritional importance. Harvest by Alaska natives are rare. Only seven reported Mickey taken by Alaskans from 1930 to 1987. Killer whale, Arlu, location and migration. Killer whales observed in all oceans and seas. Denser populations in colder waters. Greatest density is found at high latitudes. Found along entire Alaska coast year round. Harper porpoise. Location and migration ranges from Point Barrow to California, primarily frequents coastal waters in the Gulf of Alaska and Southeast Alaska. 
occur in waters less than 320 feet. Cultural and nutritional importance, subsistence hunters in Alaska occasionally take harper porpoise. In Barrow, it's common for one or two to be caught each summer. In 1991, pack ice may have contributed to high numbers caught in subsistence nets. Bearded seal, Uguruk, location and migration. Alaska population over Bering, Chukchi, and Beaufort Continental Shelf, January through April, concentrated over northern part of Bering Shelf. High concentrations near shore, south of Kivalina. Seals that winter in Bering migrate in spring, spend summers along Chukchi, Beaufort Ice Edge. The National Marine Fisheries Service has received a petition to list the bearded seal as threatened. Cultural and nutritional importance harvested for subsistence by many coastal villages. Skin used to cover wooden frame of skin boats used for subsistence and bowhead whale hunting. Spotted seal, Kasigia, location and migration along the continental shelf of Beaufort, Chukchi, Bering, Ohak Seas to Sea of Japan. Migrate south in October winter in Bering Sea along the ice edge, in spring inhabit coastal areas after retreat from sea ice. In summer and fall, seals use coastal haul outs regularly, often mistaken for harbor seal. There are petitions to list spotted seal as threatened. Cultural and nutritional importance, historically vital staple of native food and clothing. Blubber is still important part of Inupiat diet. Skin and fur is used for jackets, pants, hats, mucklucks, etc. Ring seal, nutchuck. Location and migration, circumpolar distribution in all seas of the Arctic, in southern Bering Sea as far east as Ohok and Japan, as far south as Bristol Bay in years of extensive ice cover. Ring seal, nutchuck, cultural and nutritional importance, a traditional source of food and clothing, heavily harvested in coastal villages by subsistence hunters. Fur used to make mucklucks, jackets, pants, and other clothing. Pacific walrus, Ivik, location and migration, inhabit shallow continental shelf waters of Bering and Chukchi seas, Entire population occupies pack ice in the Bering Sea. In winter, congregate southwest of St. Lawrence Island and Bristol Bay coast. Move north as pack ice loosens in April. Late April, Bristol Bay to Bering Straits. In summer, most migrate into Chukchi. National Marine Fishery Service will make a decision in September of 2010 on whether to list the walrus as threatened. Cultural and nutritional importance, traditionally important subsistence and cultural resource to Alaska Natives, important part of the diet of many coastal peoples. Fisheries. Barrow, Wainwright, Point Hope, Point Lay subsistence fish taken from 1987 harvest reports. In this section, we will discuss the English and the Inupiat name. Salmon, an Inupiat name. Chum, Ikaluguruak. Pink, Amaktu. Silver, Ikaluguruak. King, Ikaluguruak. Whitefish, round and broad, is Anaklik. Humback, Pikuktu. Less. Cisco Ekalusa, Arctic Cisco Kaktak. Freshwater fish, Arctic Grayling, Suluk Pawak, Arctic Char Ekaluk Pik, Burbet Titalik, Lake Trout Ekaluk Pak, Northern Pike Siklek. Next is the seabirds, the seabirds of the Arctic. The seabirds are birds that spend virtually their entire lives on or near the sea. 
obtaining all of their food from the water. Most are medium or large birds, similar in size to robins or crows. Specialized adaptations allow them to live at sea. Some wintering at sea several hundred miles from land. All species raise their young on land, generally in the summer. Seabirds nest on protected cliffs or islands, often in dense groups called colonies. Many of the Alaskan seabirds also nest across the Arctic from Canada to Norway. Eight species nest only in Alaska and parts of Russia. About 50 million seabirds nest on Alaska's coast each summer, 87% of all U.S. seabirds. First is the Pomeranian Jaeger. And how to recognize it? Largest of the Jaegers, broad wing, white wing flash, two spoon central tail feathers, twisted 90 degrees. Long feathers in breeding adults, capable of amazing aerial maneuvers, and even a backward somersault. How to recognize a parasitic Jaeger? Brown back, whitish underbody, dark wing feathers with white flesh. Head has a black cap, long pointed tail feathers. Long feathers are lost after breeding. Two species, light and dark colored. Light colored has white from the throat to the belly, brown band on the breast. Parasitic Jaeger, where, to breed, where they breed, they're widely distributed throughout the Arctic and the Aleutian Islands. Spend majority of their lives at the sea, coming to land only to breed June through August. Nest in ground depressions. The long-tailed Jaeger, and how to recognize it. It is the smallest of the Jaegers. Gray back, dark wind feathers without a flash. Black cap. Very long tail. The long-tailed jager, and where they breed, they're widely distributed throughout the Arctic. A migrant wintering in the South Pacific and the Atlantic. Spend three quarters of their lives at the sea. Nest in tundra depressions, breed June through August. Black-legged kittiwit. And how to recognize it? The adults have white head and body with pearl gray black tip wings, black feet and legs. During breeding, develop reddish brown ring around the eye. After breeding, have gray smudge across back of neck, darker over the ear. Way they breed, Northwest Pacific coast, also found on Atlantic coast. In Alaska, from Point Hope to Southern Bering Sea and throughout Aleutian Islands. They nest on narrow cliff ledges, on offshore islands or inaccessible areas of coast. Breed May through September. The Arctic Tern, mainly gray and white. Brown of head is black. Bill, feet, and legs are red. Tail is long and deeply forked. Where they breed, migrate annually up to 24,000 miles from Arctic to Antarctic. In Alaska, along coast of Beaufort Sea, Chukchi, the Bering Sea, and the St. Lawrence Island. Mixed on coastline breeding grounds with Aleutian Tern. Breed from May through June. The common mirror. Large bird with black or brownish upper body, head and wings, white lower body, black or gray legs and feet. Small wings, which propel it during underwater dives in search of fish. Long, thin, Black bill tapered to the tip. Where they breed, circumpolar. Southeast Alaska, Alaska Peninsula, Gulf of Alaska, Aleutian Islands, north of Point Hope. Breed in mixed colonies with thick bill mirrors. Nest shoulder to shoulder on cliff edges, ed eggs laid on bare rock. Breed through May and June. The thick bill mirror. The Arctic and subarctic regions of the Pacific and Arctic and Atlantic Oceans. In Alaska, Cape Lisbon, Kotzebue Sound, Diomede, Nunavut, St. Lawrence Island, 
St. Matthew Pribilof Islands, and they nest on cliff edges. Lay eggs on bare rock, breed June through August. Black Gilliman, and how to recognize it? It has a black body with white wing patch, red legs and feet, slender black bill with red mouth lining. Shows white wing linings in flight. And in the winter, upper parts are pale gray, under parts white, wings remain black with large white patch. Where they breed, Western Arctic and adjacent Pacific Ocean, coastlines, Siberian Islands. In Alaska, Western Chukchi and Beaufort Seas, from Seahorse Island and Point Barrow and Igalic Island to the Cape Thompson, Point Hope and St. Lawrence Island. Nest in crevices and holes, breed June through August. Killet Mirlet, small diving bird related to puffins and the mers. In breeding season, grayish brown, in winter, black and white. Shows white in the tail when flushed, a molding breed. Endangered, very rare in North America. Where they breed, coastal waters from Point Lay to the northern regions of southeast Alaska. And in the summer, they breed near tidewater glaciers, icebergs, outflows of glacial streams. Nest on bare ground in rugged mountains near glaciers up to 45 miles inland, and they breed May through August. The horned puffin, how to recognize, very distinctive bird. Small white underbody, black crown and wings. Large triangular orange and red bill. Sheds bill in late summer, leaving smaller drab colored bill. Bright orange legs and lay feet fade to pale color in late summer. In summer, has small fleshy dark horn above each eye. Where they breed, found along the coast from Siberia to British Columbia. In Alaska, Cape Lisbon to north of Point Hope, east to Cooper Island in the Beaufort Sea. Nest in crevices and burrows. Breed May through June and related to the Atlantic puffin. The tufted puffin. How to recognize it? Very distinctive bird. Highly decorated seabird with a large orange bill, orange legs and feet. Black body and wings, white face. Long gold feathers curl back from sides of the head. Loses gold feathers in late summer. In late summer, bill fades to dull reddish brown. Where they breed, Relatively abundant through North Pacific Ocean coastal regions in Alaska, Cape Lisbon through Bering and Chukchi Seas and the Pribilof Islands. Also St. Matthew, St. Lawrence, and Diomede Islands and along Alaska's mainland. Nest in crevices, they also burrow, breed through May through June. Species of concern. Endangered species, the bowhead whale. Spectacle eider duck. Stellar eider duck, the polar bear. The bowhead whale, endangered. The bowhead whale, a species of critical importance to the culture, traditions, customs, lifestyles, and the nutrition of the Inupit. The entire community participates and activities surrounding the subsistence bowhead whale hunt, ensuring that traditions and skills of the past are carried on by future generations. As the International Whaling Commission itself has acknowledged, whaling, more than any other activity, underlies the total life way of these communities. Spectacle eider threatened. Stellar eider threatened, polar bear threatened. In Alaska, Marine Mammal Protection Act protects bears by prohibiting hunting, climate change, contamination of the Arctic environment, overhunting, and increased human development pose conservation challenges. 
Archaeological sites. Archaeological sites, all phases of oil and gas activity, should avoid historic or prehistoric archaeological and sacred sites and other potentially important cultural resources worthy of preservation. Authorized under the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966, the National Register is part of a national program to coordinate and support public and private efforts to identify, evaluate, and protect our historic and archaeological resources. Do not disturb. Among the riches of the Arctic are hundreds of ancient archaeological sites, important not only to the Inupiat and other Alaska Native cultures, but to all North Americans. These sites contain clues to our ancient history and what we believe to be the first people of North America. Barrow Archaeological Sites, Cape Smythe Whaling and Trading Station, is now called Brower's Cafe in Browerville, near Barrow, period of significance, 1875 through 1899. Will Rogers and Wiley Post Monuments, located 16 miles southwest of Barrow, period of significance, 1925 through 1949. Barrow Archaeological Site, Olekpa Crash. Claire Okpiaha was an Inupiat man that ran 16 miles from this crash site to Barrow to tell about the plane crash. What, Wiley Post and Will Rogers Monument at Barrow Airport. Utkavik Presbyterian Church. Whale bones near the manse. Nuvuk site or Point Barrow, top of the world. Additional archeological sites located here and along coast in the vicinity of Barrow. Point Hope Peninsula Archeological Site Iputak site, area of significance, prehistoric, period of significance, 499 to 0 AD. Wainwright District Archaeological Sites, all of these Wainwright sites were added in 1980. Aluakpak, coal mine number three, Annaktuk, Avalitkuk, Ivishat, Atanik, Kangich, Napanik, Uyagagruk. Protect flora and fauna. Necessary measures should be taken to ensure that Arctic flora and fauna and the ecosystem on which they depend are protected during all phases of offshore oil and gas activities. Also important not to disturb. Habitats. Necessary measures should be taken to ensure that Arctic special habitats, such as ice dredge zones, coastal lagoons and barrier islands, estuaries, bays and river deltas, and the ecosystem on which they depend on are protected during all phases of offshore oil and gas activities. Also important, do not disturb. End of session three. Session four. Conflict Avoidance, Pahlaktautanyak. Explanation of Conflict Avoidance. The Inupiat way is to live, act, think, speak positively, and to avoid conflict through cooperation. This behavior model was important in ancient times, going back 10,000 years. This would not have been possible if they had not learned to live, act, think and speak positively and to avoid conflict. 
Conflict avoidance is a learned behavior passed on to generation to generation. Explanation of conflict avoidance. Today, our whale hunts are a model of this ancient value of conflict avoidance. If we are to coexist in the Arctic, it must become your model too. Conflict avoidance is the key. Arctic riches can be shared by all through mutual understanding, respect, and cooperation. Conflict avoidance is the key. It's also the law. Cooperation is an Inupiat value. How do oil and gas companies and their workers coexist in the land and ocean that has been the home of the Inupiat for more than 10,000 years? Recognize and respect the Inupiat homeland. Plan and work with their organizations. Do not interfere with subsistence hunting, which is very important to the Inupiat way of life. Cooperation is an Inupiat value. Together, we can accomplish anything. Cooperation is an Inupiat value, and in this picture depicts the whale hunting in spring, open spring lead. Learn, understand, respect. Knowledge results in understanding. Understanding results in respect. Respect results in conflict avoidance. This is why we want you to learn about and understand our culture so that you will know how important it is to protect it and so that you can help erase our fears. Summary, conflict avoidance is the model behind legislation protecting subsistence hunts from disturbance. The key is mutual understanding, respect, and cooperation. The most important lesson of this session, when you work in the Chukchi region, you are required by law to be familiar with and understand the Inupiat way of life and not interfere with subsistence hunting. End of session four. Thank you and kuya nakpak. Kuya nakpak. Now we are going to discuss the most important topics that relate to oil and gas operators and their employees. One, the Inupiat cannot afford accidents and human error in the truck GC. Your daily actions affect the lives of the local residents living in the truck G communities. Understand and respect our tra traditional subsistence lifestyle, which is very dependent on marine mammals, especially the bowhead whale. It's a matter of law that all employees working in the Chukchi area be familiar with our subsistence lifestyle. Please understand and respect our practices. The ocean is our garden. Bear whaling captain George Amawa will explain why. The ocean is our garden and the fruit bowl of subsistence hunters. It is the most pristine and virgin territory on the planet. And we need you to help us keep it that way. All personnel of the industry must not interfere with subsistence hunting. Inupiat rely on subsistence hunting to sustain their nutritional and cultural needs. And it's a matter of law. The bowhead whale is the total life way of the Inupiat culture. The bowhead is our song and dance. It is our tradition. It is our identity. If we lose the bowhead, we lose everything. Learn to recognize endangered species. 
It is important to recognize the differences between wildlife species because this program exists to mitigate the impact on wildlife on land and at sea where our subsistence culture and endangered species exist. Both the oil industry and the Inupiat have a lot at stake in the Arctic Ocean. Not only does the oil and gas industry have a stake in Arctic exploration and development, so does the Inupiat. We must work hand in hand as partners because it is important to allow the Inupiat residents to be part of the planning process, contributing their traditional knowledge of the environment. Cooperation is the key. Let's work together for the next 10,000 years. The end. Thank you. Again.